Hello everyone and welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Now today we're going to continue on with our basic tutorial for Crusader Kings 3. This is episode number 5 and I'm probably going to name this episode Gold, Family, Prestige, Piety, and Renown. Well, maybe not all of those names, but that's what we're really going to be covering this time is all of, of these numbers up here, what they mean, how you can get more of them, how they spend, what happens with them, why they accumulate, uh, so on and so forth, so forth. You get the idea. Now, you see, we've got our petty king up here. We've got his son, Brian. Now, one thing I wanted to do here at the start, because... It's always a struggle when you're doing a tutorial like this, right? If you assume someone comes to the game with really no knowledge of how the game works, if you start playing the game, things happen and people don't really understand why they're happening or how they're happening or how they relate to anything else. But by the same token, you know, we can go around and talk about all of these stats, you know, this makes up our character or the traits or whatever, but it's hard then to visualize, well, how does that matter in the flow of the game, right? Because, okay, let's say you have a 20 martial ability. Uh, okay, right, that's great, right? But until you see the game actually operate and how these things affect certain decisions or certain events in the game it's very uh, it's so you kind of have to you know meld the two together so this time we've been talking a lot about the stats and the traits and the numbers uh, per se this time I wanted to hit play and kind of show you how gameplay starts to happen and what I mean by that is in some ways this game reminds me a bit of a uh, Zork and you, if you're younger, you'd probably say, what? What in the world are you talking about? Well, back in the 1980s, to, de to date myself, there was a very popular text-based game called Zork. And you may not believe this, but people actually played it. There were no graphics, right? This is very early on in the gaming. Uh, this is back when I thought uh, Empire, the original Empire, had amazing graphics. But anyway, this was a text-based game. And what would happen is, is you would say, okay, you would type in, you know, move into this room, or it would give you a series of decisions. It could, would say, do you want to turn left? Do you want to go forward? Or do you want to go right? You know, uh, Zork was kind of almost like a dungeon crawler type, right? And so you would hit, uh, I want to go right. And once you went right, then some text would appear. And it would say, you now see a monster. Or do you want to fight? Do you want to talk? Do you want to run? Okay, this game is sort of like that. It's built on trees of decisions like that. So when we hit, hit play, based on who we are, the people at our court, uh, everybody else in the world, certain decisions will start to happen. It will pop up. Let's, I, and I'm totally making this up, but it, it's realistic into the kind of things that happen, is that uh, we'll get a pop-up that says, you know, John McDougal has come to your court and offers you a gift, okay? And then it'll say something like, you know, accept the gift from the stranger, and it, but it will cost you 15 prestige. Or turn the stranger away, but you lose, you know, five points from the good feelings your subjects have for you because I, this John McDougal has, is a magician or something. Okay, now this is kind of a silly example, but I'm just kind of trying to tell you how the game events happen. Things will, people will show up at your court. You will get emissaries from other counties, let's say, or other duchies, or maybe from the King of England or, or whatever the case may be. Um, and you will constantly be having to make decisions that could potentially cost gold. You know, usually you'll be given three or four choices of how you want to handle situations. Now, we already talked about that a little bit when it comes to stress. Um, our guy, for instance, is wrathful and impatient. So if we start taking actions that show patience, it will add stress to our character. 
because it's against his personality to do that. If we start showing all kinds of restraint, even though someone is really pushing us, it would go against being wrathful and we will build up stress. So anyway, at the start of this episode, I wanted to get this down to its slowest mode here, the game, and hit play. Now, as you remember last time, we have set up a marriage for ourselves and we have set up a marriage for Brian. And as soon as we hit play, so I'm going to escape out of our character here. I'm going to hit play and you'll start to see how things will begin popping up. And you see here, time is starting to click by. Uh, it's, you know, four days have gone by, five days have gone by. Time just starts clicking on. And while it's clicking on, well, there we go. Okay, so let's hit pause. So come down here and hit the play button. And this will, oh, I guess we can't. Yeah, we just paused. Okay. Um, <clears throat> to the amicable Petty King Mershot of Munster, I gladly accept your marriage proposal. This is not who we are marrying, but we did arrange it with him. Uh, your son and heir, Brian, and my daughter, Gwynlin, it's a pretty name, the Princess Gwynlin, will be joined in holy matrimony. May, may St. Bridge or Brigid, 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 I don't know, bless their union, signed Prince Bledon of Gwynedd. Now remember, he's over here. Usually that will light up. You know, if we click on him, there you go. See, that will light up and we can look at his player card if we want. Um, but if you ever have a question, like, where is this coming from? Whatever, just click, click on the guy or the lady and it will pop up and you can learn all about that character. Um, you will see over here. Now, the way messages happen is, you know, if somebody is saying something to you or, you know, you need to read what, what's actually happened. It will pop up here in the middle as a, you know, a big message. Other times things are happening. And they, they will just pop up over here to kind of let you know this has happened. And they will stay here for a little while. Now, you can left-click on this to minimize it, right? This, or you can left-click on it again to see the message again, if you want. But left-click it. But this will keep it down here, and it'll, they'll start to stack up. Um, so, you know, if you think you may need to go back and reference it again, you can do that. If you want to get rid of it, you just right click it then. So you have to left click on it to select. It will minimize it. Then you just right click on it and off, off it goes. So we'll hit excellent. That's great. We're going to have a royal message. And then we get another one right away. To the amicable Merchad. I, Gugon, gladly accept your hand in marriage. Now, she gets to decide that, and the reason she gets to decide that is, is she does not really have a liege. She is lowborn, if we look. Um, you see this lowborn? She is one of our subjects. So, you know, technically, you know, we're her, her lord and master. You know, I don't mean to be sexist about that. We're talking at the time, right? We are her lord and master. And so we can decide, you know, how whether she gets married or doesn't get married. Now she is Catholic. Let's not forget that. Um, she is not going to, and she's part of the Ossetan culture. Now, one thing that can happen, and we'll be getting more into culture and religion, is people can convert and they can not only convert their religion, so it's possible eventually she could become part of our religion, although it's very unlikely um, when someone is Catholic, but definitely she could convert her uh, culture and become Irish because she's going to be around all Irish people. She's going to, um, you know, start to adopt our customs and it will actually make the subjects like her better if she becomes Irish. Now, remember our wife, she's a fortune builder, so she's good at stewardship. And you may say, well, what difference does that make? I mean, she's not running our kingdom. Well, you'll see that when we go over to the council here, our wife, our spouse, our main spouse, right? Because we're polygamous. Our main spouse is always on our council. And we can either have her generally help us with all of these things. And you can see, you know, how much she would be adding. She has great stats. That's one of the reasons that we're marrying her. Um, she could help 
with court politics. So this is added to our score. Chivalry, she'll help with. Managed domain, plus six. Court intrigue, plus eight. And if you look over here, you'll say, hmm, that starts to look like it's half of whatever her points are. Uh, she also has great prowess. Like, heck, I would rather have her fight our battles. And part of that is because she's robust. <laughs> she's she's a very healthy, athletic woman, evidently. Um, but what you'll see here is her skills, we get half of that, and they're added to us. When it, the game goes to uh, assign a total value for our dice rolls and stuff, we get half of this. But we can also pick to allow her to um, do one of these things. So manage domain, she can help us just manage our domain, right? And so her, uh, her stewardship is a base, or it's a 13. Her base is eight. It's our, her, the fact she's arbitrary is a negative two. Her fortune builder status uh, gives her a plus six. And again, that is her education trait. Evidently, she took uh, some classes on uh, how to do her own finances. And that has given her a plus six fortune builder. And she has been to the holy site of Rome. Okay, well, that's cool. She took a, we could ask her all about what's going on in Rome. But here, then, she will be helping us manage our domain. And we will get a 13 for stewardship uh, from her instead of just getting the eight or uh, what was it a six if it's just the assist ruler where she helps with a bunch of different stuff um, we would only get a portion or half it's half okay and so that's how your wife her stats become important but as you can see and the purpose of the episode is not to go into the council we will do that in a future episode is this is how the game starts to play out so we'll hit excellent we are on pause here, but we'll hit, uh, as soon as we clicked on that, I'm sorry, it went back to play. Now we have hit pause, and so time is not moving. And how would you know that? Well, it's because the play button is up here, and you have to hit it to then play. And it will then turn green that we're playing. So as you see, the game is just moving through time. Now, on this level, it moves very slowly. You know, here, I usually play it on two, and you can see how it moves. Um, three, again, you know, to the fastest, look how fast it moves. Now we're going to pause. We'll go back to one. You'll see the tile then is red, and the play button is here, because if you hit it, it will then play. Okay, great. So I just wanted to show you that. Now, as time moved forward, we would continue to get messages or other things would happen. Um... It would not be unusual now for us to get a message that our wife is pregnant or Brian's wife is pregnant. Now, one thing I wanted to also do is um, talk about some of our relationships. Our spouse does not like us. You know, well, she's kind of on the fence. <coughs> Excuse me. She's kind of on the fence about us a little bit. She's a negative two. When we get into uh, intrigue, We'll talk more about this, but let's right click on her and let's talk about the different things we could do. We could divorce her, <coughs> but our subjects would not like that. We could try to sway her so that she likes us. Now, I'll tell you, having your wife just at negative two is not the biggest deal in the world. Let's look at her stats yet again. She's comely, so she's the first level of being pretty. And you can tell that because it's plus one, plus 10%, plus 10. She will give us, potentially give this to our children because it is congenital. Um, and all of these to the right over here that are green, you will see, is it congenital or not congenital? So she's robust. Again, this gives a uh, you know nice little bump. And our kids may be very... Uh, robust as well because it's congenital there's there's a ran, you know a chance right and the more she is of this particular kind of trait the better chance our kids will have of of getting it um what else is she she's paranoid she's arbitrary uh but she's patient uh, you know do those three things really make a whole lot of sense together i don't know 
Maybe you've known someone that's patient, arbitrary, and uh, paranoid. I guess it's possible. Um, and, you know, she has all of these bonuses because of these traits. Um, but the reason I wanted to come here is just to show, do we want to try to sway her, which is really the main way to get her to like us more? Well, the reason I looked at these traits is the, the big risk is that she is going to maybe try to kill us. She may try to have an affair if she doesn't like us or, you know, she could do other intrigue within the court. Negative two is not actually that bad. The most important relationship you have in the game, though, is your bishop. And why is that? Well, your bishop, if he does not like you, and he does not, he's negative five. If he's not green, all of your bishoprics do not give you taxes, and they do not give you levies. And so early on here, I want to show you what we would do. So you know, what could we possibly do that would make him like us more? Arranging a marriage is not really going to do it. Uh, finding a spouse, you know, it, these are not the kind of things that make him like you more. Now, you may want him to get married for a reason, or you may want to find a spouse for him, but they're really not, they're not going to make him or give him a better opinion of you personally, right? But then you get down to what's called the personal um, intrigues sway is the most common one that you would use send a gift is very common as well but as you will see we do not have much money so he he is not going to be uh convinced of us or like us more because we don't even have enough money to send him a gift that would cause that you see you do not have 191 gold pieces it's telling you that's how much to send a gift to him to increase his, his opinion of us, we would need much more gold than we have. We've only got 21 now. Educate a child. Uh, we will get into this as we get more into relationships, uh, but this really doesn't affect how, how he thinks of us. Uh, seduce scheme. Um, you know, he's not attracted to men. So it's just telling you, you know, you can't go do that. Now, if he hated us and there was no way back, we could also try to imprison him and get a new bishop or murder him, right? And then finally, you can give people titles. Uh, and so we have already given him the title of court physician, okay? And you see here on the red, your realm priest does not endorse you. His opinion of you is plus one or less, and you do not have a strong hook on him. We'll get into hooks at some other point. And you'll see here the red down, you know, down thumb. He does not like us. Um, as we get more into the council, I'll talk about what these things are. But for now, anyway, let's just talk about making him like us better. So let's sway him. Sway Cossington. 62% if scheme is successful, Cossington's opinion of you will increase by 25. That would be enough to get him to like us. Expected time to complete the scheme, 20 months. Uh, every month there's a predict predicted chance of 48%. Now when you start schemes, there is a chance, you know, look, it's only 62% chance of being successful. Uh, Depending on what the scheme is, there's a chance that the other player will discover it and it will actually backfire on you, right? But this is a fairly safe one because really, you know, again, this is schemes do not have to be negative. We are just trying to make him like us more. And what does this cost us? Well, it costs us nothing. We can always be running a personal scheme, whatever that is. Now, once we get him to like us, maybe we will come over here and get our wife to like us and try to sway her. But for now, we're going to start uh, started a sway scheme against Cossington. Okay, um, now let's let time play a little bit. And you'll see right down here, there's a rose that shows you what current scheme you have going on. Now I'm going to speed this up. Let's go to level two and level three, and we'll eventually see whether this scheme works. I'm just going to keep bumping it up until we get some kind of message about Cossington.
Will we? Will we? And here we go. So now it's paused for us because a major event has happened. Um, and actually, this really doesn't have to do with our scheme, strangely enough. Um, it says Bishop Cossington has gained a spotless reputation for his absolute rejection of any carnal pleasure. Okay. His unwavering discipline has served as an example to follow for many young insularists, our religion, trying to resist the debasing lure of lechery. How commendable. So our faith's fervor has increased by 10. He's serving as an example of our faith. Our people are now more fervorish about our religion. How commendable. And then you see time starts again. And now it stops. It's just paused. And when it's, it's this crosshatch like this, um, you will see uh, that if we once we make our selection, time will start again. So you may want to go down here and actually stop the game if you don't want it to do that. So let's get out of, oh, well, actually, let's look at this. While studying the tactics of ancient generals, I was astonished to learn about the exploits of Hannibal Barca during the Second Punic War, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is a great example of how the game operates almost in a text-based format. Like Hannibal, I will annihilate my enemies. So it's telling you, you have studied this. Why have you studied it? Well, probably because your education trait is a martial skill. So what will happen if we choose this? Like Hannibal, I will annihilate my enemies. This would give us the aggressive attacker trait. And now we haven't gone into military yet, but we will. Um, enemy fatal casualties plus 25%, okay? So this is one of those, you know, a temporary add-on trait. No other character in the game, you know, has to have this one. We have gained this one through the fact that we are studying the martial lifestyle. And now we can choose. Hannibal was a true master of Fabian tactics. You gain the trait logistician, because, but we gain 10 stress because we are impatient. And this is what I was talking about, right? So this logistician trait is good because it gives us it looks like better supply duration. That's great, right? But we are impatient. So becoming more, you know, a logistician to, you know, study the Fabian tactics is causing us stress. That will give us 10 stress. But 10 stress isn't a huge deal, right? We have until 100 till we hit the next mark. And so logistician might be something we want because supply, you know, we're out here in the wetlands of Ireland, supply might be very important. Um, versatility was Hannibal's greatest strength. This would give us a flexible leader. So if we're on the defense, we get an advantage, but this again gives us 10 stress because we are impatient. Again, you have to, it's cost benefit. What are we gonna do? And then finally it says, bah, he was a fool fighting a hopeless war. It, it, it doesn't affect us at all. This is basically like a pass. If you're thinking of a board game or thinking of a text-based game, this is like pass, okay? Well, this up here, like Hannibal, I will annihilate my enemies, gives us good aggressive attacker. We are the biggest realm in Ireland, or at least tied for being the biggest realm, and this has no downside. So we might as well pick that. And now we have gained the trait aggressive attacker. So now you see how that works. Um, and this is how the text-based portion of the game works. Now, again, we're paused because we selected that. Let's go back down here and hit play. Uh, because I really, oh, let's pause this again. Now, this is one of the times that something pops up down here. It's not a major enough event that it gives you a full read here, but it does say you got an unpressed claim on the earldom of Connacht. Con Lang officially acknowledged your claim to the earldom of Connacht. Okay, what, is that? what does all of this mean? Um, who is this guy? Con Lang. Well, he's not one of our subjects, we see here. He is the chancellor of Petty King Ied. Interesting. So who is Petty King Ied? And now you see, he is the petty king of Connacht, which is our northern neighbor. So what happened? Well, 
very nicely, his Earl, one of his Earls, so a guy that controls the county of Connacht, actually said, hey, uh, you know, this petty king of Munster down there really could be the Earl of Connacht. You know, we found some text somewhere that says he could be. It was a mistake. Um, a blunder results in us getting a claim. So if we come back here and we look at our character, and we look down here at claims, two claims. Well, we knew that we had an unpressed claim on the Kingdom of Ireland, right? And we haven't pressed that claim yet. We haven't gone and attacked somebody and said, hey, the reason we're doing this is we should be the King of Ireland. But now you see, we also have an unpressed claim on the Earldom of Connacht. And Connacht is a county, so it's an Earldom, a county title. I have an unpressed claim on this title. There are two claimants, and this will tell you who they are, okay? This is the guy that made the mistake. He's the current Earl, and now we have an unpressed claim. So if we want to go start a war over Connacht, we no longer have to pay, whether it be through prestige, gold, time, or otherwise, to get a claim on Connacht. We could go declare war on them immediately and say it's because we have a claim on Connacht. Now let's go up here to our current situation. Again, we're not endorsed by our bishop. We are, that's, we're currently doing that. We're trying to get Bishop Constantine to like us. Um, and now you, you can read a little more about it. If his opinion gets below 10, negative 10, he might start interfering in our affairs. Now, he does not right now. It's, he's a negative four, right? Oh, by the way, let's go down and do this again. We can left click on this, right click, and off it goes. We've already read that. Uh, again, we have too few spouses, and we are going to go up and take care of that here in a moment and show you how angry our, our current wife may be about that. Um, but... This is what I wanted to get to. You can declare three wars. Uh, Desmond, okay? So we could declare war on this guy, the Earl of Desmond. Why is that? Well, because he owns the third county. I say you know, owns, but he has the title to the third county of our Duchy of Munster. So we just have a built-in claim for anything that's supposed to be part of Munster. But now we have these. You can declare war on Earl Ied. Now, why is that? Uh, well, I don't know. Let's see. Now, this is because... Uh, oh, actually, this is interesting. Um, this is because one of our courtiers has a claim on it. Now, that's something that's beyond what I wanted to do this time. I just found that interesting. We actually have a courtier, someone that's at our court, that has a claim. Now, what probably happened is he got kicked out of this land, and he was somebody's son or otherwise, and he's got a claim on that, and we can use that because he's part of our court. We are not going to go down that rabbit hole yet, although I find that very interesting. This is actually, and this is why I was confused, because this is Petty King Aed, and we just gained this. This is Connacht. What are our claims? Our claims are this one, which is the Earldom of Connacht. And because he had a minister who made a mistake, he had an Earl that said, oh yeah, you know, Petty King Munster definitely has a claim on this title. Now we have a reason to start a war to take back Connacht. So I just wanted to show you that as we move. Now we have two family members that can get married still. Our half-brother Lorcan, our half-brother Conchabar. Uh, again, you know, it's not the biggest deal in the world. That's why they're not showing as important decisions. Uh, would we like our half-brother to get married and be happy in this half-brother? Uh, sure, you know. But ultimately, we're worried more about our line. So we wanted to get married, and we wanted to make sure Brian got married. Now, speaking of which, let's go pick a secondary spouse. Now, what you'll notice is, is when we click on this, and we're going to look for a spouse, the only things coming up are Irish. Why is that? Well, it could be because of the filter that we have on, and you should always come and check your filters. Uh, but we see that's not it. You know, culture, we say we want all. Religion, all. 
So what's going on here? The only the only one that we have on is kind of your standard filter, which is fertile. So what's happening here? What's happening is is we already have a wife, right? No Catholic woman is going to agree to become our second wife. The only women in Europe or yeah, so essentially females that we could marry, the only eligible females we could marry are all going to be of our culture, which is polygamous. And so they don't see a problem with being a second wife. Now, our Catholic current wife much uh, will probably very likely see it as a problem. Now, I'm not going to go through every one of these. You see uh, Abin is hunchbacked. Uh, we have Scaly. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have someone that's a potential alliance down here, but she is only 10. Now, how does the game treat that? Well, of course, they're not going to let you marry a 10-year-old, even if maybe that was done back then, okay? And I don't want to get into that. Look, it, it was a different time, right? Um, they will not allow you to marry someone until they are 16, which is considered of age. So you would be betrothed to this person, right? Um and then once they turn 16, then you're married. I am going to go ahead. I'll just pick this lady. She's trusting, gregarious, temperate. We like that. She's lowborn, but we're going to choose her. Um, she has no inheritable traits. You know, she uh, it will be into our house. Again, you always want to check that. Uh, I'm going to propose, and her liege is our vassal. It's the guy down there in Ormond, right? Uh, which is Earl Ragnald. So he is her her liege. She belongs to his court down there. Um, and so we're going to have to ask him. Of course, we'll accept plus 125. That's because, I mean, she's lowborn. She's just a member of the court. Of course, you know, she's going to want to marry up into marrying the, the king, even if the petty king, even though... Um, she would be a second wife. And so she is going to get 600 personal prestige. Uh, we're going to get nothing because we are marrying what is considered below us. But we're going to send that proposal and we're going to continue to let the game play out. Now, I want two things to happen. Uh, I want that marriage to happen, but I also want us to sway. Okay, now we have, again, this is pause. If we do not want the game to restart when we hit excellent, we should go down here and actually pause the game. This is a temporary pause. So greetings, my amicable liege. I accept your marriage proposal. You will be joined with my acquaintance, you Saul. Okay, may God grant you long life and many children. I am actually gonna pause this because now you can see something and you'll see pause pop up here has happened. So we're gonna hit excellent. Now look at our main wife, our first wife, our primary spouse. She was a negative two in her feeling about us. She is now negative 42. And you will see down here why she is now not in a monogamous marriage. This goes against all of her Catholic beliefs. She's a negative 40. Now, if we would have married this woman, and you see her down here now, Petty Queen Usal of Munster is now our wife. She, you know, as soon as he accepted, we basically had a, a ceremony, right? She is very happy. She's plus 43. If she's fine being our second wife, that's okay. Um, if she was our primary wife and we would have then picked a secondary wife, again, she would not have become upset. That is what is expected in our culture and in our religion. But our Catholic main spouse is very upset. And the more upset she gets, the less likely maybe we are to have children. The, le the more likely it is she may run some kind of scheme against us. And so um, you just have to keep these things in mind. And that's really where culture and religion became, become really important. Um, now, another thing I want to point out down here, this is our scheme still against Cossington. Progress, a 4 of 10. It's now been 12 months, so it's just taking some time. He has not responded to our efforts yet. And we're going to speed up time here a little bit. And we're going to hit play. And we're going to hope that eventually here, we are able to sway Cossington. And that, and as you see, you'll see time click by here. 
Okay, hey, something happened here. Petty Queen Guagon, now that is our primary sp spouse, gained the trait pregnant. So we'll come up here. She is now pregnant, and you see that's her. Now that, that hurts her prowess by negative two. I think that's probably, uh, you know, makes sense. And these are called health traits, and you will have these happen if we get too much stress. For instance, we will get a health trait that we've had a mini breakdown, or it can cause other things. But her, now she's got the health trait pregnant. Okay, uh, great, and she's pregnant. And now this time, I think I'll just let it continue to run. Uh, and maybe, you know, now we're starting on constant again. Now we have a temporary pause because something major happened. Praise St. Brid, Guagon has given birth to a perfect little daughter. Nice. And we can name her whatever we want. Right now it's EU Brian. Now they give you certain suggestions. So it could be after an ancestor. Guagon, so her mother, we could name her after her mom. Uh, Gormlaith, I don't know, we could look and go see on our family tree who that's after. Or we could name it after like a good insular Christian name like Siobhan, Dor Dorothy, Margaret. Or we could name her after a good Irish name, Dobessa, Emmer. You know, they just give you certain ideas. Uh, name after some of your you know, family members. Um, I kind of like IN. Let's just do that one. And then when you hit this, you may grow to be strong and wise, my daughter. Okay. And now we have a daughter. So I, I want this to play out. I'm just going to, oh, actually, other things happen. Oh my goodness, so many things happen. I think I'm going to leave this episode right here. We have had a vassal. Our vassal, Earl Ragnald, has now converted from being Norwegian to Irish, his culture. So down here, it was a Viking, you know, he was Norwegian. So just assume he was a Viking that had landed here. We eventually made him our vassal, probably to keep him from going to war with us at some point. Said here, you can have the county, but you know, we're not sure. This happened before the game started, but he has now converted his culture. We've also now had a child and you will see our child right down here. This is A-N, a Nick Merchad Brian. So we have now had a child, that's exciting. And we also clicked away enough here in martial experience that we could go pick a new perk. And so I think I'm gonna leave it here this time. Now I had originally said at the start of this episode, I was gonna call this, you know, about money and piety and prestige. I think that's going to have to be next episode. I'm going to call this one starting to play the game because we really did start to play the game and hopefully you see how the game kind of flows and then that you we can build off that for you to also understand even more what's going on and it's not just about numbers and stats you can actually see how those things affect the game uh so for strategy gaming dojo this has been a blast this was a lot of fun hopefully you learned quite a bit and you're starting to really understand how great this game can be you can tell some amazing stories uh with this game it's just a ton of fun once you understand it uh so again for strategy gaming dojo thank you so much i i really appreciate you taking the time to listen I hope I'm helping you. If you did like this, go ahead and uh, give me a subscribe or a thumbs up. Uh, give me a little feedback. I would appreciate it. But I'll talk to you next time.